Alrighty, welcome back and hopefully you weren't too overwhelmed by having to tell the time in the last lesson because we're going to talk a little bit more about time in this lesson, just a little bit different, but still some of the same concepts. So just to get our brains working, Jenna can skip 50 times in one minute. How many skips can you do in one minute? So we learned in the last lesson on an analog clock face there are numbers and lines and in between each number is four lines and if you look here I have you know between the one and the two one two three four four different lines so what do you think these lines means now remember it takes five minutes for the minute hand to travel from one number to the next what do you think these lines in between represent well, if you guess that they're additional numbers, so for example, we learned that the number one is actually the five minute mark. And if we're talking about one line, um, so we're trying to get to the 10 here in between, if you guess that this line is probably six, seven, eight, nine, then you're correct. So we have um, each minute goes in between. Now, if you don't have a clock that has the lines on it, then you're gonna have to do some estimating. Is that about two minutes after? Okay, so let's say I have the hour hand here and the minute hand there. What time do you think it is? Well, it's not quite at the one, the hour hand, so it's gonna be 12 something, but which minute is it pointed to? Well, it's definitely you know around the five, but not quite the five, and probably, if you know that the four, you know, count five, 10, 15, 20. And if you're worried about, ah, I keep forgetting which number is which, you will eventually memorize them. Don't worry. So just remember five, 10, 15, 20. And now I mean, it's close to 25, but if I count one line, so 21, 22, 23, 24, then we can see that it is 1224. Now with that in mind, I'd like you to try this out. You tell, the exact time. So we're no longer going to a multiple of five. It's not gonna be on the five, 10, 15, 20. I've now made it a little bit more difficult where you have to count the lines in between the numbers you already know. So pause it, come back when you're ready. Okay, we're gonna go left to right here. And so the first uh, um, hour is, you know, past the one, but not quite the two. Uh, again, I have that four that we were just talking about. So. If we look at 21, 22, 23, if you said 123 on this one, good job. And on the next one, the hour hand is again, not quite at the eight, so it's gonna be seven something. And if we look at the minute hand, it's past the seven, which is 35 minutes. Two ticks after that is 37 minutes. So seven, 37. Um, on this next one, the hour hand is pointed at the 12. So it's gonna be 12 something, and it is one minute past the 12, so this will be 12.01. It hasn't even got to the five yet. Five minutes, remember, is that big one there. So it's one tick after the 12, 12.01. And then lastly, um, this is very close. The hour hand is almost at the 11, not quite. So it's gonna be 10. And how many minutes? Well, if I count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and uh, you're gonna go 51, 52, 53, 10, 53 is the exact time right there. So good job. Now the remainder of this lesson, we're gonna focus on one kind of concept. And, and in North American society, we don't generally do this, but there are some cultures in North America that do, and we'll get to that in a sec. But looking at that clock right now, what time is shown on the clock? Well, it's pointing, you know, the big, the minute hand's pointed at the 12, and the, the hour hand's pointed at the four, so if you've guessed four o'clock, you're correct. But how do you tell if that is morning or afternoon just from that clock? And suppose a clock face had a different number for each hour of the day, what might that clock look like? So instead of, um, we talked in the last lesson that goes around twice in a day. Well, what if it only went around once? What would a, that kind of clock look like if we made such a thing? 
So let's say your friend says that she will be at your house at 8 o'clock and you need to know if she means 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. And actually I've had this problem before. Someone says meet me or I'll meet you at such and such a time. I was like, did they mean morning or afternoon? I'm not even sure. So there is another way to write the time where we don't use a.m. or p.m. We use something called a 24 hour clock. Now, maybe you're going to stop here for a sec. Maybe you have always wondered, what is this? AM PM thing. Well, it's it's Latin. It stands for um, before before noon and afternoon. And so uh, AM stands for ante meridium, which means before midday. And PM is post meridium, which means after midday. So that's kind of what happens if it's before noon or midday. Noon is midday then we call AM and if it's afternoon, which we call afternoon in our language, PM. Anyways, we use something called a 24 hour clock. Now, why do we call it 24 hour clock? Because there's 24 hours in one day and we're using this concept where we only use the numbers once. So from midnight to noon, let me think about that. Think about that for a sec. From midnight to noon, the hours we use are zero to 12. But when we get to one o'clock, we don't go back to one o'clock uh, on a 24 hour clock. We go to 13. We go beyond. We're 13 and we go to 24 because 24 is 24 hours. Now, when we do a 24 hour clock, we always use four digits to write the time. So right now on this clock, it's 820. And we know it, we're going to say it's in the morning, 820 a.m. And so to show in the 24 hour clock, we use like I already wrote, but we use four digits. So because there's normally not anything before that eight, we still add a zero because we want it four digits. But if we're going to deal with something after in the afternoon, okay, p.m., 9.27 p.m., we say 21.27. Now, your clock might look like the one on the screen. The one in my classroom has those extra numbers. If you can see... Right here, it shares 9 and the 21. That's there for those that like a 24-hour clock. There are people that like 24-hour clocks, and there are people that use 24-hour clocks more than others. And quite often, some people call 24-hour clocks military time because the military always uses that. They'd rather not say AM, PM. They just say 2100 hours. You know, they like to say that. Instead of 9 o'clock, they say 2100 hours. Um, the French in Quebec and maybe over in, in France, I'm not sure if they do, but the French use the 24 hour clock in Quebec. And so they write a little bit differently. They might say they don't use a call and they use an H for hours. So 21 hours, 27 um, in this case. So there's a few different ways that, you know, people in North America use a 24 hour clock. Generally, we, you know, the most common person uses the 12 hour clock, but um, if you want to be more precise and there's no room for confusion, you can use a 24-hour clock. So anyways, we're going to look at a 24-hour clock today just so you understand. Now, there's some tips here. If it is before 10 a.m., that's in the this is in 12-hour time, when I say 12 a.m., we just add a zero in front. So for, you know, midnight is actually this. That's midnight. Um, if we're talking about... 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Do you see I'm putting a zero in front? And we do this all the way to 9 o'clock. But when we get to 10 o'clock, it's already at four digits, so we don't have to worry about that. But if it's afternoon, we just add 12 to the number. So let's say it's 3.27 p.m. All I have to do is add 12 to that. And it becomes 1527. And that is the 24 hour clock. So let's say 8 o'clock uh, in the evening, 8 o'clock p.m. We add 12 hours to it. 8 plus 12 is 20. So we would say it's 20 hours. So let's have a little story here. Jerry picked up his mom from the store. He picked her up at 1320 hours. What time is that on a 12 hour clock? Now we're in we're in the 24 hour clock. I want to convert it back to you know the 12 hour clock. So if I have 1320, now 
Uh, I gotta think, before I was adding 12, so if I wanna go back, I have to subtract 12. And if I subtract 12, I get 120. So 120 is actually the 12 hour time that he picked up his mom. Let's say Jasmine flies to Toronto. Her flight leaves at 11.45. The flight is six hours long. What time is it when she arrives? Now this is in 24 hour time, I'd like you to figure that out. Her flight leaves at 11.45. The flight is six hours long. What time is it when she arrives? Now what's good about 24 hour clocks is we can do a little bit more math of this. So 11.45, well, I can literally add six to this. And 11 plus six is 17.45. Now the second question is, what time is that on the 12 hour clock? Well. Remember, like we did up here, we subtracted 12. So let's just do that again. So what is 17.45 in 12 hour time? Let's subtract 12, 17 minus 12 is five. So in 12 hour time, it's 5.45 that she would arrive. And funny enough, um, airplanes like to use 24 hour time just for that reason, they don't wanna be confused. So if you ever get your ticket, it is usually in 24 hour time. All right, I'm gonna get you to try this one. Uh, I have some clocks in analog and I have some clocks in digital. Um, we're working a 24 hour time here. So I'd like you to try matching the clocks that show the same time. So one digital clock will match with an analog clock. Um, if it's easier, we'll call this A, B, C, and one, two, three. And we can do some matching here. So pause it, look at the two clocks, pair them up, Come back when you're ready. Let's look at the analog clocks. And that analog clock um, in A is the hour is not quite at the 10. Now, I don't know if I'm dealing with a 12 hour clock or if I'm dealing with a 24 hour clock. So it's either going to be 940 something, not quite 45, or 2140 something. Now, do I have something? Oh, I have a 943. So that would make sense. So this, so this clock. Um, a and number two go together, it's 9.43. Looking at the second clock, the hour hand is not quite at the five, it's at the four, so it's either going to be 4.20, or if it's in a 12 hour, 24 hour clock, it's going to be tw um, four plus 12, which is 16, so 16.20. Ah, there is a 16.20 right here. And I guess that leaves, you know, these two match up, but let's look at why. Um, we have the 12, 12 o'clock. It's not quite at the one, 12, 15. Now we don't know if that's AM or PM. Uh, if it was PM, it'd be 12, 15, but if it was AM, it would be actually zero hours and 15 minutes because remember at midnight, the clock starts at zero in 24 hour time. So those two go together. All right, so there you have it. In this lesson, we looked at uh, a concept called 24 hour clocks because um, sometimes when we're looking at an analog clock or, you know, digital clock, we're not really sure if it's AM or PM. And some digital alarm clocks have a little dot that tell you, oh, it's PM. Um, but if you, if you like 24 hour clock, it's really obvious what time of day it is. If we're talking about evening, uh, morning or afternoon. And so it's a little bit more easier to communicate with. And so some groups that um, need to be precise, like airlines and military, they like the 24 hour clock because there's no room for confusion about, is this morning, is this afternoon, is this evening that they're talking about. This is a life skill, so please remember in life, math happens. Take care.